going live. Corley Moore here, Firehouse Vigilance, weekly scrap number 13. And we're going to be discussing three methods to improve your training. As always, thanks for joining me. Um, I'd like to encourage you guys to make comments, ask questions as we go along. Today I want to know how effective you think uh, the training culture is in your department. On a scale of 1 to 10, let me know in a comment if you're willing to share that. I don't want you guys bagging on your departments or speaking ill of where you work. But uh, just I, as a general, just what do you think? Scale of 1 to 10, how, how healthy do you think the training culture is in your department? So, weekly scrap, 13, three methods to improve your training. Number one, we have to identify what we are talking about there is a whole lot of it's a broad category when you say training everything from books to the gym to the classroom to the drill ground there's a whole lot that it encapsulates training and we have to identify what and what i'm talking about today when i say more effective training i'm mainly talking about those physical skills the drill ground the hot the hands-on training and that's what I'm talking about. Although, although some of the stuff I'll talk about applies to everything when it comes to learning and training and, and it applies in the classroom and books and videos, but mainly I'm talking about HOT, the hands-on training, the hot classes, and the drills, familiarization and getting better at those drills. So here we go, three tips to improve your training. And the first one is practice versus scrimmage. What are you doing? Do you even know and does it matter? So what do I mean by that? When we're flying with the lights and sirens down the road and a mile away, we can see a column of black smoke shooting up in the sky. We know what's the real deal. That's game day, okay? We're going to perform and uh, good, bad, indifference. It's game day. <clears throat> now, what I'm talking about here is practice versus scrimmage. It's not game day. And practice is where we sit down, we learn, we discuss, and we figure it out. Okay, so it's a new skill, it's a new technique, it's a new idea, concept, or a new foundation that we're going to build on. And that's practice. That's where we do the walkthrough. That's where we do the, uh, the no pads. The, um, you can stop in the middle of, of trying a new forcible entry technique with a wedge and an axe, and you can say, wait a second, what, what am I doing wrong here? Someone show me, you know what I'm saying? And you can ask questions, have discussions. And there's not much realism to practice. It's, it's more about learning the technique or getting the foundation down. And that's the practice side of things, okay? Uh, and the purpose is to gain the new skill. Brush up on an old skill maybe that you've, you haven't touched in a while. But it's all about discovery and familiarization of the new. So scrimmage, on the other hand, so we got practice there and then you got the scrimmage. So scrimmage is the drill. It's go time. It's time to show what you got. It is time to fly or time to fall. There's no stopping. There's no asking questions. Uh, you, you're trying to pretend in the scrimmage that it's the real deal. You're trying to pretend that there's that black smoke off in the distance and that it's game day. You're pretending that there really is a victim inside the room. Uh, and the purpose of the scrimmage as opposed to the practice is you're trying to find what works and what is lacking and what can be improved and what your shortcomings are in your technique, in your drill, in your pre-plan, in your whatever it is you are scrimmaging, you are trying to identify and find those shortcomings. And both of these are extremely important, the practice and the scrimmage. Both of them, because they both serve, but they, but they serve very different uh, uh, purposes. Um, you gotta, but the biggest thing is you have to identify what are we doing day of. So when people show up to train, if you're in charge of training, if you're the leader, if you're the training officer, you have to identify what are we doing today. Are we learning a new skill? Are we practicing? Then everybody get in here, get close, encourage, ask questions, have discussion. Um, f figure out what's working, what's not working, those kind of things. But if it's, if it's scrimmage time, you're setting up the scenario, you're setting up the drill, here you go, here's go time, then that... That's where you can identify the shortcomings and, and um, for yourself, your crew, you can figure out where you need to have more practice. Um, so you're either trying to discover and familiarize new knowledge or you're trying to reinforce mastery and identify shortcomings. And that's the difference. Practice versus the scrimmage and knowing what you're doing when you start. There's nothing worse for, for firefighters than to show up at the training ground and have what's called mystery training where they don't quite know what's expected of them. So to have that, that 
expectation set from the beginning is, hey guys, get in here, we're learning something new, I'm gonna teach it to you. Next time we come back, we're gonna drill on it and it's gonna be the real deal and we're gonna see how good we can do, right? Firefighters will rise to the challenge of the, of the scrimmage if they know that that's what they're going into to begin with. And, and if they don't have the tools from practice, um, then, you, then you're just setting them up for failure. So, identifying what needs to be done, which leads right into the second tip on improving your training. And this is one of the most important things for training to be effective. And it's one of the hardest things to allow or, or embrace, or it's something we usually try to avoid in the fire service. And that is, failure is key. Failure is what allows you to find what you do not know, and it lets you identify what needs more training, what needs more practice, what will not work. And if you're not allowed to fail, um, then you can. You, then it's almost impossible to grow. And there's so much that gets in the way of failure when it comes to firefighters and our personalities, um, egos. And I'll be. I'm as guilty as anyone. I hate messing up. I hate. Uh, screwing up or failing in front of my peers, my officers, those uh, I'm in charge of. I, I hate it. And uh, But as a leader, as a trainer, you have to make it okay to fail. And that makes it okay for people to try as hard as possible, to give it all they've got. Um, you have to shut down the haters and the mockery. Uh, I know that we're still firemen. We, we love, there is nothing, I don't think there's anything we enjoy more than busting chops. Um, and, and that, yeah, I think we, uh, it's a second calling. We love busting chops, but we have to cut down the mean-spirited mockery and, and what makes it not okay to fail. Where people, uh, I, I can't count how many times I've been at hands-on training and someone will be in the back with their arms folded saying, no, this, I don't need to try this. I'll handle this day of, or this is stupid. And it's, almost guaranteed they're not willing to try because they do not want to fail in front of those around them. And so this is a very tough one to do, but number two is failure is key. We have to make it okay to fail. Failure defines your limits. Once you know where those limits are, you can figure out how to train and push past them. Without failure, you will never find those limits. So, Number one, practice versus scrimmage. Number two, failure is key. And the final point of this scrap, which is for training to be more effective, you have to train stress inoculation. We make decisions in compressed time frames under extremely stressful situations. And we will always fall to the level of our training. We have a physically demanding, mentally demanding, psychologically demanding, emotionally demanding job. And it is very stressful at times, and we have to be able to make decisions. And if our training does not reflect the environment in which we make decisions, then we can't expect to make success. We, can't, we cannot expect our guys to be successful in those situations. And so what do I mean? I mean don't get me wrong. Firemen are unbelievably good at overcoming um, unbelievably high challenges. And so we all, that's what we do. We find ways to make it work. But what I'm talking about is finding ways to be more effective at making it work. I don't want to sell anything short, but a uh, perfect example, I had a house fire about two weeks ago. Um, could see smoke from three miles away. It was, it was getting it. And first new engine company got there, pushed in the front door, inch and three quarter, made the turn, pushed down the hallway, got to the, got to the room that was burning, it barely made it in the attic. They knocked it down, knocked down the attic, saved half the house easily. Um, great, great push. And we were doing a critique later, and the officer was beating himself up a little bit, saying how he'd been studying these tactics, reading these books on uh, transitional attack and resetting the fire. And when he rolled up, there was, there was fire blowing out this B-side window, and it had been a perfect time to, to do a reset the fire. And, he was, and, and I 100% think he made the great call on, on his fire attack and everything. I'm, this has nothing to do with, I think he saved half that house easily. Um, no, so, but, but the point is, is that on the day of, stepping off that engine, high stress, smoke, flame, 
uh, on air. He made the call and he fell right back to what he'd always done, which was front door, inch and three quarter, go in, kick that fire's ass. And he did an unbelievably good job. Uh, but it goes back to if we don't stress inoculate ourselves in that training, then we are always going to fall back to what we've always done, always going to fall back to a default. And we have to make our, our, our scrimmages physically demanding, psychologically demanding, emotionally demanding as we can so that we are stress inoculated when it is game day, when there is that smoke show and when there is that victim trapped. And so any ways that you can come up with to add that level of stress in some way, shape, or form, usually through physical exertion, uh, can lead to more effective training. So that's it. Three tips for more effective training. Practice versus scrimmage. What are you doing? Identify it from the get-go so that everybody is on the same page. Uh, failure is key. Failure helps us find our limits. And finally, we have to stress inoculate ourselves. Uh, it's a mindset. We have to want to be challenged. If we're just going out there and checking boxes on the training ground, uh, we're wasting valuable time. So that's it for the three tips for more effective training. I uh, hope you enjoyed them. As always, if you have uh, more tips to add to this or more information, please put it in the comments uh, below. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, firehousevigilance.com. Uh, today's book I want to talk about, <clears throat> Never Split the Difference, Chris Voss. He was an FBI negotiator uh, for his career. Now he runs Black Swan Training, where he trains people on how to negotiate. Unbelievably good book. I'm actually on my second reading of it right now. Um, how do I say this? It's almost like it is teaching you manipulation. And, and that almost seems like a dirty word. But the motivation for, for how you use it, I guess, is what really determines the, the techniques and tips in this book. Um, very good stuff. It'll make you a better communicator. Uh, it will definitely make you a better negotiator. Um, so if you get a chance, check it out. Chris Voss, Never Split the Difference. That's that. Uh, finally, a little bit of housekeeping. I am working on the firefighter reading list. I started uh, talking about it a few weeks ago. Um, firefighters generally don't read books. And the few that do read books, and that's not a knock, but the, the ones that do read books, a lot of them don't want to take the time to write a book review. So I'm trying to get a... Uh, I'm reaching out to people who I know are readers and say, hey, I, what I'm trying to do is put together a, a list for firefighters to come and check out this book is worth reading and this is why. Just real simple, cut and dried, basically firefighter proof uh, book, re book, book reading list. I am still working on that. If you know people who are readers or are willing to contribute to that, please contact me and let me know. And the final thing is, of course, the Vigilant Creed. Uh, very near and dear to my heart. The Vigilant Creed, it's a creed of accountability. It's an oath um, that you take and you sign and you read it and you say, yes, I'm going to make myself accountable to this creed. If you get a chance to read it, it's uh, firehousevigilance.com slash the vigilant. Uh, there is no money involved. There's nothing like that. It's strictly an oath of accountability to excellence and to each other um, saying that I want to be a part of this. My goal when I started it was to hit all 50 states and we have stalled at 38 states. There are 12 states still to go. So if you know a firefighter in Arizona, Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, Minnesota, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Virginia, Alaska, Hawaii, or Delaware. Those are the 12 states that we are missing. So uh, have them, if they're interested in being a part of the Firehouse Vigilant, to sign the creed. And so, guys, that's it. I love uh, visiting with you on the weekly scrap. Next week, uh, Michael Snodgrass, uh, the man behind the fire talks. Uh, the Worst Fire Conference, AggressiveFirefighter.com. He is the guest, uh, and I'm really looking forward to uh, talking to him and picking his brain. If you do not know Michael Snodgrass, that guy, I'm serious, I say this each time I talk about him, he has his fingers in more pies that are making the fire service a better place. Um, he is already leaving it better than he found it, and he's still here. And so I'm looking forward to talking to him. It's going to be a great scrap next week. And other than that, I'm lining up other guests for the future. Uh, as always, I hope the tone stays silent unless it's burning. Uh, stay safe out there, everybody.